This is a name that I haven't spoke about in quite some time, but what he has to say here is something that Microsoft is saying, something that you'll see on the internet when it comes to exclusives and exclusivity and how it helps or hurts the industry, how it helps or hurts these different console manufacturers and how things are going to look in the future going forward. Now that Microsoft is now making games on other platforms, Sony is now making games on PC and to a lesser degree, Nintendo has opened up things when it comes to smartphone development and maybe stuff in the future, but nowhere near where Microsoft and Sony are at this point. So I want to talk about it are playstation and nintendo's exclusive models in terms of how they run their business wrong and broken well there is one analyst that says this and this is the name that i'm talking about here and it's michael pactor he was someone that was very prominent in the late 2000s and i probably say like early 2010s everyone would always rush to michael pactor he'd be the number one story on n4g he'd be saying all sorts of stuff and whether he was right or wrong it didn't really Really matter at the end of the day it was the fact that people were rushing to him to talk to him about different things and in the recent years his significance has went down completely as more people have got into the content creation and talking about business with video games and talking about other things michael pactor has just kind of taken a back seat especially after gametrailers.com kind of went away but we do have something else here that I want to talk about because it does relate to stuff that many gamers talk about on Twitter or X, social media, in their videos. And it's kind of been an ongoing war right now when it comes to exclusivity and how it can help or hurt franchises, games, companies, and all of that. So let's jump into the article here. I first saw this on PlayStation Life. So shout out to PlayStationLifestyle.net. My bad about that one. So here was the article. They said that PlayStation and Nintendo exclusives model is wrong and broken analyst says webbush securities analyst michael pactor has opined that the playstation and nintendo exclusive model is wrong and broken in an episode of the pactor factor the veteran analyst suggests that microsoft is taking the correct approach by bringing some of its games to other platforms while keeping others exclusive playstation and nintendo exclusive model is outdated and no longer works says Michael Pactor. Now, Microsoft ruffled quite a few feathers amongst the Xbox community by announcing games like Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush for the PlayStation 5, Grounded, and Pentiment. Those are coming to the Nintendo Switch, but all of those games together are going to be on the PlayStation 5 or already on there. Now, the company has repeatedly indicated that it wants to move away from the first party exclusive model and how that's just not something that's going to be great for their business going forward in the future. And they want everything to kind of be Xbox or have Xbox when it comes to their data and what they've been researching that when it comes to the new generation of kids and people playing video games, they don't care. They don't care about this whole exclusivity thing that that is a old outdated model. Now, according to Pactor, Sony and Nintendo are still following an outdated model that worked up until the mid 2000s, but doesn't make financial sense anymore. Quote, the Nintendo model and the Sony model proprietary titles on proprietary platforms is the wrong model it's a broken model pactor says supporting your content by managing the distribution on your platform is like a movie studio owning a chain of movie theaters and the only way you can watch their movie is in their theaters now pactor is of the view that although platform exclusives make money they are foregoing a lot of revenue by skipping other platforms now this is a hot button topic because yes the model of exclusives exclusivity has been around for a very long time decades in this industry but does it not work anymore if you're looking at it when it comes to microsoft they have not been able to live up to the exclusives model their biggest ips their biggest franchises have had blunders to the point to where they kind of have to go in this direction and i think that with game pass stuff like that also i would say diminishes the value of your exclusives because you just say hey you can have them on this service it's not something to where you can sit there and say i'm going to get this bulk sum of revenue for however many months or however many years whenever the game is hyped and all of that you have to put it on a service and you don't know if it's going to actually pay for the development or not now it's something that i've heard people say okay yeah game pass makes enough to where it does pay for all of these games just to be on the service 
for your cost, but there's no upward movement with Game Pass. Game Pass isn't gaining tons of new subscribers. They've been stagnant overall and they've had to lay off thousands of people now there are some people coming back to those positions but microsoft is talking if you hear phil spencer and everything he's talking as if yeah we have to kind of put things on other systems because one we want money to be coming into those studios because game pass isn't just supplying them with infinite amounts of money like the people who make hi-fi rush for example they're not just getting supplied infinite amounts of money from game pass when nobody's even really downloading or buying the game separately off of it on the xbox store so i do think that there is some truth in what mr michael pactor has to say here i'm not going to completely you know destroy what he has to say just because i do think that yes the exclusive model can be very good but at the same time i think that microsoft is also a product of what they decided to do game pass was not the system seller was not the type of thing they thought they thought game pass with their exclusive games was going to turn the tide for them because of the value of game pass if game pass blew up let's just say game pass blew up the exclusives that they had on there blew up they didn't put them on playstation 5 let's just say they didn't even put everything on pc but even if you wanted to include it that's fine but let's just say they had these big exclusive games that blew up and game pass blew up or let's just say game pass just took off and they had like 60 70 million subscribers or something crazy right i guarantee you microsoft probably wouldn't do all the things that they're doing now the reason why they're doing this now is because game pass didn't take off the way that they wanted to and you're kind of in that bubble where you're offering your first party games all of them that's the guarantee on game pass so it's not like you can sit there and say okay well we're not gonna have a game that's hyped or a big game not on game pass and collect all that revenue right so i think that's the biggest issue that we see here it's not like they wouldn't have done the same thing if their exclusivity model actually worked which their game pass exclusivity model or what they did with the games to get on game pass it's just not working they're not growing the way that they want to grow so they kind of had to be forced into this move now sony kind of had to be forced into making games on pc now they for a long time didn't want to do it but they realized as game development gets more expensive and there's more problems and there's more issues and you need to have that revenue come in they realized that yes pc needs to be a part of it and will they realize maybe later that hey maybe xbox can be somewhere where they can put their games as well like maybe like a hell divers 2 for example maybe maybe something like that happens in the future but i think sony still feels that they know that their exclusives will bring in more people to their ecosystem to buy the third party games and to buy the other things but i do think that what michael pactor is saying here definitely might relate to sony a little bit more with certain ips not everything but with certain things now where this doesn't make sense to me is probably where nintendo is at this point Nintendo has obviously a system that has sold over 140 million units. You have IPs like Mario Kart that have sold over 60 million, 40 million for Animal Crossing, 30 million for Super Smash Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Odysseys at 26, 27 million. Like you have a lot of exclusives that bring people into the ecosystem in order for them to buy the Switch and buy games on that platform. I don't think Nintendo's really sweating it right now at this point. I think Nintendo still feels that the model works because they've been highly profitable and they've been doing good with this model the way that it is. But I do think in the future, Nintendo could decide that, hey, maybe we'll bring over some of our older library of games to PC. It won't hurt if they are on there. Like, will it really hurt that bad if, I don't know, Metroid Prime Remastered is officially on PC? People are already playing it with crazy types of mods and all that dolphin anyway. So would it hurt if that game was on PC or certain other smaller franchises that don't get as much sales on the Switch, but you can put out an official PC? PC version for 20 30 bucks or whatever and see what happens i think in the future that will and the reason why i'm saying that 
I, although it sounds kind of crazy maybe to some people, is because I remember I used to say Nintendo's not going to put their games on smartphone or anything else, and then Nintendo decided to start putting games on smartphone. Now, yes, it's not a lot of games. They only have a small handful of titles, but trust me, back then, people thought Nintendo would never put their games on on smartphone and they ended up doing it and it's been i would say okay has it been like the most successful thing in the world but it's been pretty good fire emblem heroes has made intelligent systems and nintendo a ton of money they've made money on their other games like the mario run game and the mario kart game and they had some other stuff before some of them have been shut down some of them are still going but at the end of the day i think it was a good business venture for them and it was only a handful of titles i don't really think that would be a problem for them to do that with a handful of nintendo switch games in the future so i do think that eventually it'll get there but i don't think it's going to be to the point to where pactor is thinking or to the point to where you'll see nintendo starting to take their biggest games like mario or zelda and the new mario or zelda game and it's on other platforms within a reasonable amount of time because hi-fi rush came out what was that 2023 on the xbox platforms and pc and it's already now out on the playstation 5 like i don't see nintendo doing that where it's like within a year or something i can see it being older titles that they've already brought over remastered previously and then putting them out on pc or maybe even a different platform at some point but i do think that it's a very interesting discussion it's interesting to talk about because i don't necessarily think that the model is completely broken for sony or nintendo and especially not for nintendo considering the results that we got but there are some points to be made when it comes to the exclusivity and maybe potentially not making as much revenue and all of that but you got to also remember that they do still feel that people will buy their system for those big games microsoft does not have the big first party games that nintendo and sony have in terms of drawing power and their system is in a distant third place and i would not be surprised when the next nintendo switch comes out and it has these big exclusive games and it probably outsells the xbox series pretty quickly overall because people are drawn to those exclusives on the platform so I do think that you can't just do exactly what Microsoft is doing and Microsoft's business moves now are more of a factor that they weren't able to push Game Pass as this massive system selling feature or the system selling service and they kind of have to pivot to make sure to keep things up. So that's just my thoughts on it. I could be wrong, but I do think that I have a pretty good grasp on what's happening here on both sides overall. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other videos right here on screen. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.